On the show now is the now former BKFC bantamweight champion after retiring earlier this week and vacating the belt. And of course, it is Johnny Bedford himself. Johnny, how are you? I am well. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I, I love the background. I love seeing the belts behind you. Let's just start with the, the most obvious thing. You you deciding to walk away and retire. How did you come to that decision? Um. It was a really tough decision, if I'm being honest. Um, 16 month layoff definitely was a part of it. And I guess we'll, we'll leave it at that. It was a part of it. Um, I was, I didn't want a 16 month layoff. I did have an injury. I had an orbital fracture back in, I don't want to get dates wrong, May, April of last year. And, uh, Jared Grant fought still, won the belt. I plan on fighting Jared Grant later on that year. Um, they obviously pulled some strings. Reggie and Jared fought. Uh, Reggie beat Jared. That kind of put me in a predicament that I didn't really have an opponent. It got the division in a stalemate of sorts. And, and my layoff just kept becoming longer and longer. And um, as I started getting ready, you know, I, 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 I felt terrible about the decision only because I was bothering bare knuckles so much about, Hey, like I'm trying to fight. I need, you know what I mean? I want to make a paycheck. I want to continue doing this thing. And in my mind, I did, I was bothering bare knuckle, um, about getting me a fight. And then we finally came to the agreement or both sides were, were working on agreeing to, for me to fight again. And that obviously led to, you have to get ready to fight. You have to get into a training camp. And my mind said, yes, we're going to fight again. This is what we, this is what we've always done. This is who we are as a person. And I started getting up early and going for runs. And I started getting in my truck at 9 a.m. after that and going to the boxing gym that I go to and sparring young guys that are in shape that do this year round, like they rightfully so pro fighters need to be. Um, and I had to be honest with myself. I don't want to do this shit anymore for lack of a better term i have i've had a long career i had my first fight in 2003 um but prior to that i've got thousands of wrestling matches um i think it was just time and that that's what i had to be honest with myself that my body doesn't want to do it anymore um i didn't want to be injured that's what happens in training camps you know what i mean i come home one week it's my neck the next week it's my shoulder then it's my back and then it's this and i had to think about it man it was difficult but i had christmas coming up with my kids i have my 40th birthday next week coming up and it was like do i want to sacrifice these things again being selfish in a training camp you know what i mean waking up early not necessarily being present all the time because I'm training two, three times a day. And I had to be honest with myself. And I didn't, I didn't want to do it anymore. I, I, I've said it all along, fighting's easy. If you just told me to fight, I'll go fight. It's the six, eight weeks it takes to be able to fight at this level. Right. I know that whoever it's going to be, is going to be ready. And he's going to be trying to kick my ass. So if I don't show up ready, what, 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 what am I doing? You know? And that's, that's the, that's the part that it got, it got old. I'll use that. I'm getting old, but it got old that, that those six to eight weeks of sacrificing everything. I've, I've, I've sacrificed enough and I'm at peace now knowing that. And um, it, it, it was a hard decision, but I'm at peace with it. I'm at peace with it. That's for sure. All right. Well, you did mention you'll be celebrating your 40th birthday next week, January 6th, to be exact. I was going to yes. wish you a, a happy early birthday there. But, you know, one question I wanted to ask you is you, you see a lot of fighters that, you know, have they've been in this their, their whole lives. Like yourself, you've had a very long, a very successful career. And they take a little time off and a year or two, three goes by, your body heals, you start feeling a little bit better. Has that been something that has even crossed your mind or has it been too soon to think about, well, maybe down the line in a couple of years, I can come back and have another uh, big fight? Um, I think it's too soon. I think you, you hit the nail on the head with that question at the end. There. I think it's probably a little too soon. Again, I'm, I, I was wrestling with the decision hard for a couple of days. I didn't know what to do. Um, 
I've got a really good contract just waiting to be signed to go make a paycheck. It's like a good paycheck. It's like really hard to not sign that damn thing to go make this money. You know, you, you work your ass off in combat sports to get to these paychecks. And now you get them and you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to do it anymore. So I, I struggled. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I see myself in a couple of years trying to come back. Um, it's interesting you brought it up though, because I'm still so heavily involved in the sport. I own two gyms. I'm, I'm gone more weekends than I'm not coaching MMA fights somewhere. I've got a very active MMA team, pros and amateurs. Um, I've got upper boxers in my gym. You know what I mean? We're, we're busy and I'm constantly coaching. So I'm in the gym every day. I'm around combat sports every day. Um, but I don't foresee, I think, I think, I think it's nice how I, as bad as I felt having to let bare knuckle know, it's nice doing it on my own terms. I'll say that, um, you know what I mean? I go out as the champ. I'm not tarnishing legacies here, fighting fights. I shouldn't fight fighting in fights that I know I can't be ready for. Um, I don't have to fight. That's, that's a really, for the first time in ever. I, I've been good with my money. I've made good money from bare knuckle. I've been smart with it. I, I, I don't have to fight anymore to buy diapers and pay rent. And you know what I mean? I've now bought a house and diapers are, are taken care of. And my life's a lot better now. And um, I didn't have to do it. So it was really hard to be that 40 year old man, just getting motivated every morning, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I can appreciate that 100%. When you look at just training, everything that you'd have to put your body through to get ready to fight, is there one aspect that was the hardest for you that was just really grueling towards the end to, to get through? Um, I think it's just the nagging injuries, um, if I'm being honest, because like I, I would start the week like, what's it going to be this week? You know what I mean? What, what What's going to hurt? And I've got a bad neck. Um, I, it, it seems to whatever I've wrestled my whole life, people pulling on my head. I've just, my neck constantly is just something's wrong. I'm in a chiropractor two, three days a week. I'm trying to get massages. It's like, do I want to do that again? You can, I broke my hand a couple of times, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I want to, I, I don't want to, I broke my orbital bone 16 months ago. We just talked about it. You know what I mean? It's like shit's going to happen in sparring. Um, this doesn't make or break me, but it's like, do I want to go through that shit again for, for, for what, mm -hmm. for, for a paycheck? It's like, you don't have to do this anymore. You don't have to fight for a paycheck. You're, you're going to be okay. And maybe it's time to do this on like, again, on my own terms. All right. Well, as I mentioned earlier, you know, anyone that follows combat sports knows exactly who you are. You were on season 14, I believe, of The Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. You were a longtime UFC fighter. You fought for a lot of prestigious promotions. You're the BKFC champion, or at least you were until you uh, had to vacate the belt from re retiring. Is there one thing that you can point towards that you say, that's what I'm most proud about that I accomplished in my career? Um, great question. There's a I'm going to get it cut and, and, and cut up because I need this video for my own good. But there's a moment after I won the belt for the first time. Um, they're interviewing me and I take the microphone over and I say, I'm talking to my kids and I say, daddy did it. Like daddy went all in. Like that, my, 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 my son moved across the country with me, you know, and my ex-wife now, but they, my son only knows combat sports. He knows that dad fights so that I can eat dinner. My daughter is the same way. They're, they're five years apart, six years apart. Um, it was a moment that I could, that I, I mean, it, I, I almost get emotional talking about it, but daddy did it. Like all this shit was worth it. I got to call myself a world champion. Daddy did it. And that's probably the greatest moment that i can remember personally in combat sports for myself you know obviously making the ufc was a really huge moment for me in my combat sport career um but i don't know that i would even be still a fought, fighting as long as i have had it not been for even bare knuckle fighting championships bare knuckle fighting championship became a thing at the perfect time for me i was struggling with what to do i wasn't in the ufc so the paychecks weren't great 
regional MMA is not paying very well at all. Um, I'm fighting motivated people trying to make a name off you because you're a UFC vet. So you got 25 year old kids coming at you every weekend. Um, and bare knuckle boxing gave me a fresh start. Um, it's like, wow, this is one real sport. I know I'm going to be really good at it. I said it from the beginning. I told Feldman day one, I'm going to be a champ. I'm going to be a world champion. Like, and I'm sure everyone said that, but I was just like, I knew my, my background, my, my upbringing, bare knuckle boxing was kind of made for me. And, um, I reached my highest highs because of, because of that promotion. And I'm just forever thankful. I wanted to ask you too, because I, I have a, a pretty close friend that's in the BKFC promotion. And, and I interviewed Ben Rothwell recently. So when you look at the, just the roster that BKFC has, I mean, David Feldman's doing a fantastic job. Is Who do you feel like is the most dangerous fighter, regardless of weight class in BKFC, that's not a champion right now? Wow, great question. Um, ben Rothwell's a scary man. Holy cow, I was there for his bare, bare knuckle debut. Um, I was front row um, there in Louisiana. He's a scary individual. Um, outside of that, I think uh, a lot of people, I think his stock went down because his last performance wasn't great. But I just chalk that up to maybe that he overlooked his opponent, didn't have a great training camp, and shit, did you just have bad nights? But I think Mike Richmond's the real freaking deal, bro. Mm-hmm. I think what I watched him, I thought, because because when Mike Richmond and Dakota Cochran got matched up, I said, holy shit, that's the fight of the century. Like, Dakota Cochran is really good. And Mike Richmond made him look really bad. Like, it was crazy. And that's what made me a believer in Richmond um obviously richmond's last fight wasn't his best um i think he may have fought down to his level of competition per se i've had those nights i've had bad nights in bare knuckle where i won decisions on guys that i was clearly better at but better than uh, only one of them but i've done it more so in mma so i understand having bad nights but i guess to answer your question it'd be rothwell's a he's just a big son of a gun to deal with holy cow and i think richmond not only mentally, but he, he, he's, he's got what it takes mentally, but I think he also has his he, he, skill sets above most people in the division. You see how he places body shots and stuff. He's super good. Like I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Richmond. Okay, both great answers. You know, obviously BKFC is different than mixed martial arts, but it's under that combat sports umbrella. The UFC has had a chokehold on MMA for for as long as I can remember. I mean, as long as soon as they really started the promotion, it just took off, and you know, everyone else has been playing second banana for a while now. Do you feel like BKFC, with how fast they're growing and just how unique the sport is do you feel like they're going to be able to rival the ufc at some point down the line for maybe the the best combat sports promotion in the world that's a big hurdle to jump and i think you just said it right they've kind of monopolized the mma and they've kind of monopolized combat sports of sort i think boxing's not doing great where the ufc even through a pandemic is doing fantastic um but it's really cool to see this new sport having a chance. Um, and it's it's winning. It's taking its chance. And it's doing really freaking well. Um, I don't know how many subscribers they have on that app now, but 200,000, something like that, at, at five bucks a month. I, I, it, math's pretty simple to me. You know what I mean? Like, they're doing pretty damn well. And I'm happy for them. There's no, that's not jealousy or anything. I'm happy for them. Um, do I think they'll ever reach the levels the levels of the UFC? I don't. I don't know. That's that's a once in a lifetime thing. What what they were able to do with that company and how what they've grown it into. Um, but I see bare knuckle surpassing a lot of the other MMA promotions. Um, there's nights that they outsell the UFC on UFC fight nights and stuff. When they BKFC puts on a big card, they get they they beat them in viewership those nights. And there's something to say about that. Is Mr. Feldman going to be putting you in an analyst role, doing some commentating? I have to imagine he wants to keep you around the promotion. I He promised me that we're going to talk about that. Um, I would love to be an analyst commentator of sorts. Um, 
I joke that I'm coming for Chris Ladle. Not really. <laughs> um, but um, no, I think I, I think I speak well. I think I, I, I'm, I'm educated. I know the sport and I do think I can add some value to the company. Absolutely. So I am hoping absolutely to stay involved. I said it from the beginning. I was there at bare knuckle one. I'm a company man. And just because maybe I'm not, you know, towing the line anymore, I would still like to work with these guys closely. I love it. You did an interview with Ariel Helwani, I think 10 or 11 years ago now. And you, you told him that you were never going to get over losing to, to John Dodson. Do you remember that? And, and are you over it now or does that still pain you? Uh, I was definitely bitter 10, 10, 11 years ago. Um, I've kind of put that to bed. Now it, it got it got a rose because obviously we all know, I think you know why you're asking this question, him being signed by Bare Knuckle. It instantly turned into, oh shit, we might have to do, we might get to do this again. And I would have loved to have fought Dodson again in Bare Knuckle. Um, but Dodson played his role really well on The Ultimate Fighter. He played the jokester kind of, I don't want to say shady, but whatever. He played who he was well, and he pissed a lot of people off, and I played into it. And am I I think I can beat John Dodson. So yes, I do think I could have beat John Dodson. I think I don't make excuses, but making weight three times in five weeks sucks. And uh I'm a big 35er, and I think I, that might have had, you know, okay. I'm making excuses now after I said I don't, so I'll be quiet. Um no, he he hit me with a good shot and he put me out and I would have loved, um, especially when we were both in the UFC, I was probably when I spoke to Ariel about that, I was either one or two and oh in the UFC. So we were both streaking. Um, it, it, it would have made perfect sense. that he give me a rematch now. Um, so there might've been some thought into that, you know what I mean? Hey, I beat him. I, I get that rematch in a fight that I think I can win with a good training camp, hydrator, right? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I think it's more strategy than, than what's the word demise or, 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 or I don't know. I wasn't stressing too bad. All right. I, I had to ask and who that knows great what, the, what the future holds there, my man. Well, it, as far as just the ultimate fighter goes and, and just being in the tough house, can you kind of sum it up? Like, what was that experience? Like, how do you look back on it now? Um, uh, super thankful that I was given that opportunity, right? It changed my life at the time for sure. Um, but I think most people ask that question, especially people on the street, and they think it's like, I'm going to give them this glorious answer. And the truth is it's jail. You're in jail. Now you're in jail with, you get whatever food you want. You get, you get whatever alcohol you want. That's another, right? You can get whatever you want to a degree. But there's no TV, there's no radio, there's no internet, there's no newspaper. You don't know, there's not a telephone. You don't know what's going on in the outside world. It's really crazy. And um, without rambling, right, it's the, 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 the camera, you're, you're taped 24 hours a day. It's, that's another thing, right? Like you're in the bath, you're using the bathroom, bro. There's a camera in there, right? Like they are, you're watched 24 hours a day. Um, but like, let's say you're eating breakfast in the morning, the camera guy sets this thing down and hey, it's a nice day, right? He'll talk back and forth to you a little bit. But just to put it in perspective, I was like, hey, who won the uh, NBA championship? Because we're taping this in June and July. And he goes, oh, I can't tell you. I'm like, dude, we're buddies. Like, what, what the hell? Like, why not? And it made sense to me. He goes, well, I can't tell you because if you end up start talking about it, it'll date it. We're going to make this look like it's airing in October, November, leading into December. If you're talking about the NBA championships, it's going to be like, what the hell? Like, it doesn't make, and it all made sense to me. It's like, ah, oh, okay. Or like, we'd be doing interviews and they'd be like, okay, say everything. They never told you what to say. You know, who asked that? Did they, did they tell you to act a certain way or they tell you what to say? Ne never. Now they may tell you to rephrase it because if I say, I'm going to kick his ass on Wednesday, they're like, oh, the show doesn't air on Wednesday. Don't say <laughs> I'm going to kick his ass tomorrow. You know, they'll, they'll do things like that. Um, I guess adding to that, they're good at capturing emotion. So if you come home pissed off at Dodson, they're going to, Bedford, it comes over to the loudspeaker and, or a mic in their, whatever you want to call it, in the house that you're living in. It says Bedford Green Room. 
that means they want to do an interview right now because they don't want you to cool down right they don't want you to whatever like shake his hand later now it's no good tv come in here tell me what he did to piss you off you know what i mean they want to capture emotion um but what was it like it was a great opportunity but it was i had a wife and a kid at home that you don't talk to for six weeks that's that's a little weird it's a i mean not weird you know you, you signed up for it but yeah you don't know anything in the outside world that first day they give you your cell phone back and you're allowed to go to like across the street to in and out burger it was like there's people it was weird <laughs> it was it was crazy so <laughs> that was my that was my experience with the ultimate fighter I can only imagine. When we talk about the past right there, let's talk a little bit ab about the future. I know that you own Fitness Fight Factory. You said you own two gyms. I guess I'm, uh, I don't know the name of the other gym, but when same you- Same name. Same name. Okay, very good. W when you uh, look at just the fighters that you have underneath of you that, that are, are young, uh, up and coming, give me a couple of names that, that you know, really could take a step into the, the, uh, the bright lights at some point down the line. Evan Guts, um, actually, he's my business partner. How he's not signed by the UFC yet is beyond me. Um, I think he's 16 and five with his last loss being kind of really bad refereeing. We got stopped standing. And if you know Evan, he's the toughest guy on the planet. Like he'll take a beating and keep coming. Um, so he should be on like a six or seven fight win streak. He was the CFFC champ. He's fighting for Fury's belt coming up. Two major promotions that feed most of their champs to the UFC. So I'm thinking with a win in February, he'll finally get his call that he deserves and get a call to the UFC. Um, we'll be a Fury champ. We'll be a former CFFC champ. Um, our only losses are the four guys who have fought in the UFC. We've never been finished other than that controversial one. Um, so he's he's my top dog, I guess. But I've got a bunch of young guys. I've got Darren Whitney and JC DeLeon. Um, I've got amateur kids that are coming up. I've got a female making her debut, pro debut next week. She's super exciting. Uh, Amber Terrell. I've got a young lady who works for me, Jessica Sotak. She's undefeated. So, well, I think I've actually lost her last one. But she'd be doing really well since uh, her and I have teamed up. Um, I'm excited. We've got a really, really, really good team. And... I get to share my passion and my knowledge with like-minded people that want to be pushed. And I'm, I'm very fortunate to do what I do. So right now, uh, as far as moving forward goes, you're going to be kind of scratching that competitive itch by being a coach, by helping others get better as mixed martial artists lead, leading the gyms that you own. Correct. Yeah. I've, I've been, I've been wearing both those hats for a very long time because I've been the head coach here for, years now i mean i started my gym before i was even in the ufc i was crazy i was I, I opened a business in 2010 just because it was the only way i knew how to pay bills i can teach and i can fight i can i knew i could do that and so i went all in and during covid we made some really big 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 moves we opened a second location i bought out some competitors i moved us into an 11,000 square feet facility we've got hundreds of members we've got 80 classes a week we got fitness classes and kids classes and obviously jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts we got everything um really really fortunate and yeah i've worked really hard to build what we have but with two locations now we'll probably have a third and not too long and we just continue to keep growing Johnny, I couldn't be any happier for you. You really did accomplish a lot in your career and you still have a very bright future as a coach and a gym owner. And again, like I said earlier, who knows what the future holds? We could see you back a couple of years from now. You, you just never know. I know the fans would love to see uh, a fight with you and uh, John Dodson if that ever for some reason comes to fruition. Uh, I do want to thank you so much. I really appreciate you doing this interview with me here today, uh, letting me know about your decision to retire. Before we, we do sign off, I want to give you the floor. Uh, uh, anything you want to plug, uh, your social media, your your gyms, website, uh, the floor is yours. Any, anybody you want to thank, the floor is yours, my friend. Uh, thank you. No, just anyone watching, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I this was my life for the last 20 years almost. I had my first fight in 2003. So it was not an easy door to close, um, but it was the right time to do it. And it's time, um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll rewind a little bit. I said, I wore a fighter hat for a very long time and I wore a father hat and I wore a business owner hat and I wore a husband hat. I've worn 
a lot of hats. And whenever you have to wear that fighter hat front and center, kind of takes away the value of the other ones. You have to be selfish as a fighter. And I'm really excited that I get to finally take that fighter hat off for the last time and just really concentrate on my other hats. I think I'll be a better business owner. I think I'm going to be a better husband. I think I'm going to be a better father. I think I'm going to be a better coach. Um, it was just the right time. And I'm just, I'm thankful for everything that I've, opportunities I've been given. And I'm, I can say it, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to leave on my terms and, I'm proud of the things I've accomplished in this career.